Ascension, Crossing Over to Awareness of the Astral Plane, by Alice B. Claggett. Dear Ones, During Ascension we cross over to Awareness of the Astral Plane, which is also known as the Fourth Dimension, then later to the Fifth Dimension, where we experience Christ Consciousness, as we become multidimensional human beings. This talk is about becoming aware of the Astral Plane. Introduction At this moment on Earth, as almost everyone has awakened to the Astral Plane, the Fourth Dimension, there are ever so many questions flying around in the Newsphere. People are wondering why they are hearing the Astral Chatter, for instance. Why are they suddenly telepathic? How may they feel safe? even though everything they once felt to be true seems to be slipping away. What is going on, anyway? The ascension process that we are now in the midst of has caused everything to change on Earth. Another way to put it would be, because of the 2012 shift, everything has shifted, and is continuing to shift. Though these are not the end times, they are times of new beginning of coming to many new understandings of who we are and what humankind is in the process of becoming. Many people in the world today are becoming aware that they are more than mere physical form. They are beginning to develop new sensitivities, new clear abilities, and new understandings of the physical realm and of realms that lie beyond it. It is becoming clear to many people that we have other bodies, that is, energy fields. In esoteric circles, these are known as the subtle bodies because we must develop our clear senses before we can perceive them. It is becoming clear to many people that we have other bodies, that is, energy fields. In esoteric circles, these are known as the subtle bodies because we must develop our clear senses before we can perceive them. For instance, Many people are beginning to discover our subtle energy form known as the astral body. Their awareness is beginning to expand from the physical plane into the astral plane. I intuit that all humankind is crossing through a barrier that for eons concealed our eyes from the astral realms. Some forerunners of our peoples have already crossed over to astral awareness while still in physical form. Others are crossing that bridge even as you read this blog. And many more will do so in the coming decade. I have done some research on this crossing over into awareness of the astral plane that humankind is experiencing, and will try to throw a little light on the topic. The Astral Body and the Lower Mental Body According to the esoteric lore of the School of Theosophy, a person's astral body consists of astral matter and additionally sometimes of a desire elemental comprising elemental essence, as follows. Astral Matter According to the school of theosophy, of astral matter there are seven grades, and seven subgrades within each grade, consisting of energies ranging from coarse to very fine, or of dense to very lacking in density. The relative coarseness of one's astral matter determines what one experiences on the astral plane, whether one dwells, for instance, in the hell worlds or the heaven worlds, or in the purgatory worlds that lie between them. I feel that the density of a person's astral matter depends on the emotions they choose with their willpower to create in their astral body. This, I feel is the reason why the Ascension teachers unanimously agree on the importance of creating the positive emotions of gratitude, appreciation, joy, peacefulness, and love in one's life. For the experience of these emotions will allow the astral body to awaken to the heaven worlds, while still in physical form. Elemental Essence, Desire Elemental the school of theosophy describes a desire elemental that may, in some cases, vivify the human subtle body known as the emotional body. As a person's astral body is composed of astral matter, so the desire elemental's body is composed of elemental essence. 
Theosophy warns about giving in to the earthy desires of that portion of our astral bodies known as the desire elemental, and suggests carefully training the desire elemental to support one's sole purpose during an incarnation. Let us first consider the concept of the desire elemental and end of itself. I can see reason to believe that there might be such a being, as the popular belief, oft expressed in popular literature, is that the gut has a mind of its own. Were it to be true that the desire elemental might be an independent being in our gut, then we might look at the pros as well as the cons of the situation. One might propose that the properly trained desire elemental has very good work to do in service to humankind. Through arousing in us earthly desires, it lifts us up from what might otherwise be utmost despair to do with the gruelingly painful experiences of the physical life on earth. It grounds us, keeps our physical bodies safe, and provides us with emotional exclamation points known as physical orgasm. The act of orgasm, although celebrated in popular literature, I feel to be unjustifiably deprecated in the spiritual world. For the spiritual adept who wishes to be a benefactor to humankind, I feel this physical act to be capable of re-terraforming the astral plane in the swiftest lightning strokes of joy and compassion for all beings everywhere. We might also surmise that the desire elemental, through its work with the third personal chakra, the navel point energy, gives us the opportunity to co-create with God a plan of action for new life on new earth. My thoughts on the lower mental body and the desire elemental. As nearly as I can tell, in my own recent writings the desire elemental of the school of theosophy corresponds to the lower mental body which speaks to the world telepathically through a portion of the enteric, or intrinsic, nervous system, the neurons of the colon, which is about 5 feet long, and has an absorptive surface area the size of a tennis court, as I understand it to be. As the enteric nervous system is a portion of the autonomic nervous system, which is largely unconscious, it would follow that the lower mental body represents a portion of the subconscious and unconscious human mind. From my own clear experience, I gather that the thoughts and feelings of the lower mental body of a human being are greatly rammed up by the sympathetic reaction of commensal organisms of the colon. As I understand it, these outnumber the human cells of the colon 10 to 1. And so this ramping up effect ought not be underestimated, especially on the telepathic plane. Kama, Manas, and the Lower Mental Body You may have heard of the words Kama and Manas? In the school of theosophy, Kama means desire and Manas means thought. I feel that the Lower Mental Body is a combination of Kama and Manas, of desire, or emotion, and thought. These two, along with the astral body, I feel, create the human personality. I intuit that, on every level of the astral plane, Kama and Manas will express as both astral negative scenes and astral positive scenes, scenes from the hell worlds and from the heaven worlds. Until the 2012 shift, though, it seemed to me that the astral negative had more to do with the lowest three levels of the astral plane and with the lower mental body. This would make sense, in that the lower mental body is a largely subconscious or unconscious in nature, thus subconscious or unconscious repressed, socially unacceptable thoughts might be presumed to gravitate to it. Changes in the lower mental body due to the ascension process Right now, the lower mental body, the gut brain of humankind, is undergoing change due to the shift that occurred in 2012, and the ascension process that continues even today. This process will very soon allow most of humankind to sense the lower mental body, which heretofore has flown beneath the radar of awareness, presumably because it has carried the negative emotions each of us has repressed in order to conform to societal expectations. 
our awareness is expanding into the astral plane, which acts as a bridge between the lower mental body and the higher mental body, the intellect, and the functions of the human brain, such as the capacity for abstract thought, and the discriminative faculty, for instance. Thus, with our higher mental bodies, we are becoming aware of what has heretofore been repressed in our lower mental bodies. According to Ascension Lore, in 2012, the light of the Pleiades photon belt has been coming into Earth. This light, I feel, is uplifting and transforming the light of our Sun, which then transmits to new light to Earth and all her beings through those coronal mass ejections that impact Earth's magnetosphere, especially during solar maximums. When this uplifting and transforming light touches the energy fields of human beings, the knots and tangles of negativity in their lower mental bodies begin to untangle, and their lower mental bodies begin to clear. As the lower mental bodies of humankind comprise a portion of the unconscious thought cloud of the world, the collective unconscious of humankind is becoming more and more conscious and more and more full of the qualities of love, light, and joy. According to Ascension Lore, this transformative effect will continue to occur for the next 2000 years, as Earth will be bathed in the light of the Pleiades photon belt for that length of time. Societal Expectations and Repression of Emotions, Expressed as Physical Disease it is the binding down effect of the act of repression of our socially unacceptable emotions that has until now created the human contribution to the hypnotic, fall asleep quality of the unconscious thought cloud of the world, the collective unconscious and the collective subconscious, and has allowed the interplay of light and dark forces and of light and dark astral entities, through white and black magic, with our own lower mental bodies our gut brains. I posit that the human subtle body known as the etheric body funnels collective unconscious thoughts from the subtle body known as the astral body into the physical body, where their density causes them to settle mainly in the neurons lining the physical colon. If not cleared, I feel they may create physical disease. Current clearing of the shadow of the personality and prospect of more robust health for humankind and for our commensal organisms. If this be true, then conversely, the clearing of the unconscious thought cloud of the world through the ascension process will lead to healthier and healthier colons, and to increased health for our commensal organisms of the gut, such as the Martian bacterial colonists of the colon that I have discussed at length in my blog category, Mars. Martians, the elder race. It is the repressed, unconscious quality of the shadow side of our astral matter till now, that has made of our astral body's negative aspect what might be thought of in psychology as the shadow of the personality. It is the shadow side of our subtle bodies that has caused humankind to spiral down into a state of low consciousness the nature of which can clearly be surmised through perusal of the mass media. Astral Stories as Expression of the Current Clearing I intuit that the nightmare-like astral stories we have been hearing on the astral plane since 2012 are in fact the unconscious shadow plays that have created the misqualified energies circling around and through Earth's new sphere today. Through the incoming light, each person's shadow has been changing. Thus in aggregate, the astral stories are becoming lighter and brighter in quality. Hidden Nature of the Lower Mental Body Before the 2012 Shift The astral chatter that I have been hearing in the last few years appears to be talk that is going on in the astral negative realm amongst our astral bodies to do with emotions repressed in the lower mental body, and unbeknownst to our higher mental body. The cause of this gap in consciousness is the shadow or negative, nature of the energies of the lower mental body. Apparently, the two energies, conscious and unconscious, or one might say, positive and negative, innately repel each other. 
as to why this is, I cannot say, as, in the world of magnetism, positive and negative attract. I surmise there must be some barrier between conscious and unconscious, between positive and negative mental energies, it must be this barrier that prevents the two from joining and clearing. The very mechanism of repression of emotions lies in the fact that our will creates a barrier between our higher mental body and our lower mental body. The higher mental body contains thoughts and emotions that support our social mask. The lower mental body contains thoughts and emotions that do not support that mask, which are relegated to our deep unconscious minds, and hidden from us on the astral negative plane. The nature of duality, balance light and dark expressed within a person's energy field. In the early 2000s, before the Great Ascension clearing got well underway, I experienced other people's astral forms as very menacing, dark figures bent on rape, torture, mutilation, and killing. Every night, it seemed, astral beings were releasing pent-up hostilities by venturing out in astral form and giving each other life-threatening illnesses on the astral negative plane, in the form of curses and black magic spells. Every night, and all day long too through daydreams, these astral beings were astrally leaping out of their physical forms and raping the random stranger on the astral negative plane, this seemed to apply to celibate men and women much more than to the average householder. The more spiritual the physical life of a person on earth, I saw with utmost concern, the more antisocially their daydreaming and nightdreaming astral negative body seemed to be behaving. How this might possibly be was a mystery to me. I came to see this was the way with life in the third dimension, for many people, in the human energy field, there is equal light and dark. Where there is great light in the physical body and in the lower mental body, there may be great dark in the astral body, and vice versa. Other ways light and dark may express as balance in the realm of duality. Conversely, light and dark may express through portions of a person's incarnation, there may be great light in the energy field during a portion of their life, and great dark in another portion of their life. Christ's Life In the rare case, like that of Christ, where the physical and all the personal subtle bodies express the light of the soul then that must needs be compensated for by a tragedy and shadow as great as his crucifixion. So that in regard to Christ's earthly life, the light has stood for two thousand years as a guidepost for humankind, and the crucifixion as an explanation of the nature of the third dimension. And Christ's ascension forecast for us this very time that is upon us the time of our own triumph over the shadow play. Multitemporality and balance of light and dark. For those familiar with timeline theory, this expression of balance light and dark may take place through a soul's choice of one dark timeline counterbalance through a light timeline. Balance of light and dark as opposing beings within one timeline. Within a timeline in which the soul expresses itself as a very dark or a very light incarnation, there may be counterbalance of another soul expressing very light for your dark, or very dark for your light. In these many ways duality and balance of light and dark express God's play on earth. The Evolving Universe Aside from the question of balance of light and dark in the realm of duality, there is also the question of the evolution of the universe to greater awareness of God, in other words, to greater and greater light. In physical terms, this might be envisioned as a spiral of energy upward, into the light, with dips in each circular motion of the spiral representing an age of darkness, and upswings representing an age of light. The New Age of Light changes in the astral realm since the 2012 shift. If the spiral model of evolution of the universe be true, 
then humankind may now be seen to be in an age of light greater than any experienced till now. The astral heirs bear this out, for now, in 2016, going on four years after the December 2012 shift, the landscape of the astral reality is greatly changed. The Archons are gone. The great devils and demons are few and far between. Satan himself seems to be out of a gig, as black magic and mind control have lost sway on this our planet. The rulers of the city fiefdoms have been read their rights and received their plights. The city domes have recently gone down, allowing the devas back into the cities of earth. And the astral bodies of all I encounter on the astral plane have lost their deep shadowiness. Few and far between are the forays into astral mischief. Concomitant with the lightning and brightening of earth through the incoming light, the physical and subtle bodies of every human have lightened up an amazing amount. And in the months to come, more and more light will be streaming into our beloved planet, and will be made freely available for the transformation of all her children. My current experience of astral body acting out repressed, negative emotions. Right now, in 2016, I have several times, to my very great mortification, experienced my astral body express itself as negatively aspected clear chat and vision when I repress an emotion in public. I look forward to the prospect of less and less negative astral acting out as soon as my lower mental body feels safe to express emotions that are socially unacceptable in a constructive context. Male Mental Filters Thankfully, at this moment my astral personality is mostly pretty light-hearted and upbeat, but also very uninhibited, with no concern for societal expectations, and mercurial in temperament. She can waltz from delight to upset in a nanosecond. Because of her uninhibited, naive aspect, she is attracting the attention of men on the astral plane. The tenor of the conversation of the men is very different from hers, it proceeds from logic, within the framework of cause and effect, and with regard for the concerns of worldly life, including sexuality, politics, economics, the legal system, the world of business, the ecosystem, and so on. The main mental filters I see in place for male members of humankind right now and for these men who are conversing with my astral body, are the manhood mental filter, the patriarchal domination mental filter, and the global awakening mental filter. Manhood mental filter. What this means, from a practical standpoint, is that men's ability to achieve orgasm whenever they want to, and to daydream of having sex all day till now has been a fundament of the expression of their lower mental bodies on the astral airs. Without this notion, the lower mental body may express a feeling that life would be worth nothing. That may be why I often clear sense men saying, on the astral plane, my life has no quality and my life is not worth living. I believe these feelings have to do with the manhood mental filter with inability to express oneself sexually, most likely in the workaday world, because of societal expectations. I am guessing, too, that it is this mental filter that makes erectile dysfunction issues so difficult for men to deal with from an emotional standpoint. To me, the manhood mental filter consists of an unthinking, unconscious going with the principles of the lower mental body. As the incoming light provides upgrades to the astral body, I feel men's higher mental bodies will begin to discard this tenet all over earth, and they will begin to throw serious effort into the clearing and upliftment of their lower mental bodies. This work, I note, can be accomplished all in a nonce, as the lower mental body, aka the desire elemental or the inner child is eager to please and quick to learn. Here is the technique, it is as if I am talking to a young child, before the age of reason. I say to my inner child, 
I love you, I love you, I love you. If it objects, I say, with enthusiasm, I hear you. Then I repeat, I love you, I love you, I love you, with joyful enthusiasm, until it is convinced of my sincerity. Then I say, here's what I want you to do, and I come up with a very short plan of action. Keeping in mind that the inner child, while exceedingly enthusiastic, can only remember one instruction, or at the very most, two instructions. I reinforce this instruction from time to time. And change up any time I like. Patriarchal Domination Mental Filter In 2016, in my astral can, the patriarchal domination mental filter expressed itself as the astral forms of the men trying to boss my astral form around. The last time this happened, in a group gathering, to my mortification, my astral form got into a shoving and kicking match with the astral form of a man who was also at the gathering, it was like two two-year-olds in a sandbox, totally mortifying, from the standpoint of my childhood learning experiences regarding societal expectations and repression of negative emotions in a social setting. How to deal with repetitive astral acting out. Happily, since then, there have been few instances of this, I say happily, as I am not certain how to address these sorts of astral skits, especially in a public place. Ought one approach, in physical form, the other astral actor? What would one say, if one did approach them? This, for me, represents quite a conundrum. Yet if I do not act in the physical realm, might not the astral show repeat itself, in a way similar to repetitive performances of astral rape in public places, apparently by people who express themselves in the physical realm through serial rape? In truth, I have not yet found a means of dealing with repetitive astral acting out. Global Awakening Mental Filter This is the notion, most prevalent among men and to a lesser extent among women, that action in the world to right the very evident wrongs of politics, economics, the legal system, the world of business, the ecosystem, and so on, takes precedence over our own need to clear and transform our own subtle bodies. In truth, all of the changes in terms of social justice and righting the world that are so desperately needed for Gaia will take place when, and only when, our own personal awakening has been accomplished. To look to the world and say, this corporation must be chastised, or, that legislator must be convinced to change his policy, or even, contrails are ruining our skies, these thoughts cause in our astral bodies negative feelings that drag us down into the hell worlds and make it impossible for the work of clearing and transformation to take place. They are a way of projecting onto other people the state of our own astral matter which, when we have these thoughts, is bound to be dense and murky. Keeping in mind that the state of matter on the astral plane filters down into and creates our physical reality. It will be clear that any thought that causes us worry and suffering must be avoided. The thing to do is to gravitate toward those activities, thoughts, and emotions that bring joy and satisfaction into our lives. My current clear experience of my astral body. I mentioned above the personality characteristics my astral body is currently expressing, and how it appears to be gaining awareness most likely in the context of my lower mental body becoming more and more conscious. Here is more on my recent clear experience of my astral body. Today I have been experiencing my astral body's conversations as slight rhythmic modulations in the electromagnetic field of my crown chakra. But when I am in an expanded state of consciousness in a group meditation, as was the case with the astral scuffle described under patriarchal mental filter above, I experience a field of awareness about 50 feet in radius, filled with golden light, 
and I experience the astral body as a being 1 foot to 6 feet high, and 20 to 50 feet above and beyond my physical self. Sometimes my astral body speaks without my awareness, and this I consider to be astral energies of an unconscious, desire elemental nature. If I listen, I can hear her, and in this way I can throw conscious astral matter into my desire elemental matter. Already, she has become very sentient, compared to years gone by. I can, by dint of willpower, force her to say what I want, but this makes her very unhappy. From this I gather that the astral body clearing taking place during the awakening has its own timing and sequence of milestone events, and that I must wait for the proper time, and the proper message from the incoming light, for total integration of my astral body and my lower mental body to occur. My Experience of the Transpersonal Chakras as I have noticed misqualified energies playing out in transpersonal chakras 8 through 10, I gather that I am currently clearing the superconscious astral matter in my astral body. This feels to me like incursions of the male mental filters mentioned above, into the transpersonal chakras. My feeling is, I myself will download the appropriate upgrades to counter my own conditioning regarding the manhood mental filter and the patriarchal domination mental filter, keeping in mind that these mental filters are not just something that men have, and bother women with. The unconscious agreement of women to these mental filters has a lot to do with their perpetuation. Should astral evidence be used in law enforcement, religious institutions, medicine and psychiatry? The short answer is, no. The astral body is composed of a different kind of energy from the physical body and the lower mental body. Further, the astral realm is currently in the process of clearing on earth, as are astral bodies. Still now today. There is much shadow of the personality in our astral bodies, as there is unconscious elemental essence on the astral plane. The unconscious thought cloud of the world still glumps along through Earth's new sphere. What this means is, our clear experiences can be a greatly exaggerated, emotional version of something that has taken place in the physical realm. Or, something that may gather enough oomph to take place in the future. Or, something that is taking place, and in this case the clear experience carries great knock-your-socks-off emotional emphasis, which distills down into most likely a less spine-tingling physical version of the astral dream. Because of where we're in the process of clearing of the astral plane right now, which is to say, incomplete and only partly there, what happens when we bring astral evidence to bear on the physical reality is an overlay of the shadow world, and a ramp up of soul wounding on earth, as the dormant samskars of humans are touched to fiery physical action by the interaction of the astral realm with the physical realm. So right now, I would say, as more and more conscious light is thrown on the astral plane, and more and more humans become aware of their own astral bodies, the shadow of the personality, for each of us, is thrown into stark relief. Any of our goings on that do not meet societal expectations will, in most discomforting fashion, become apparent to our friends and family. Disclosure Disclosure is not just about big corporations, or world politics, or world religions. It is about each one of us, bearing and clearing the shadow of our own personality. What does it behoove us to take the most painful secrets of our friends and family? To a court of law? To our bishop or pope with thoughts of censure or excommunication? To a western medical establishment? Or to a psychiatric institute? It behooves us not at all. Law enforcement and the justice system, priests, pastors, rabbis and imams, 
medical doctors, psychiatrists and psychologists, all these consist of people who are also going through the process of clearing their own shadow. Why not give them the grace and liberty to relax and enjoy life, to sit back and go through their own process of clearing? If we do not free them for their own transformation, how can we expect them to accomplish this? Likewise, if we do not give the marginalized members of our society, and those that do not fit the mold a chance transform, along with everybody else, how can we expect their transformation to take place? But if we do step back from the causal realm, from crime and punishment, from war and peace, from economic reform and the plight of the world, and simply inhale and exhale the joy of creation, then before long, all will be clear, for each sacred human life. Christ's Advice on Forgiveness Christ's message to humankind was absolutely right on for us today, during the awakening. This is what he said in Matthew 6:15 from the King James Version of the Bible, which is public domain. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Dot. So, now taking it from the top, right now, today. All humankind's trespasses are coming up for everyone to see. What should we do? It would behoove us to forgive them. Let them go. Give them our blessing. Do not take them to court. There is a higher court at hand, that court is God's and His alone. Very clearly, Christ states, let us forgive everyone. In that way, we will be able to receive forgiveness from Christ for our own trespasses, which are coming up very clearly for everyone else to see, and to pass Christ's test of offering forgiveness to us, for our own failings. And what if our friends and neighbors do not offer us forgiveness? Then we must align our own will, our own heart, and our own small mind, with the great will and heart and mind of God and through Christ's grace, ask for forgiveness. When that forgiveness is ours, how can we be lacking in anything? On Loving Our Enemies Christ said, Love your neighbor as yourself. This is not so very hard to do, as it is in our best interests to stay on good terms with our neighbors, and by extension, those in our family and social groups, our local tribes, as it were. But what about our enemies, the scapegoat of the family, the person who is on the outs with the social groups to which we belong, the person of another social status, or culture, or race, or nationality, whom we may perceive to be bad simply because they are different from us? What of those who really are evil, in terms of human principles of communal life? Those who break every law, the depraved, the lawless, the predators, the Genghis Khans of modern life? Resolution of this kind of enmity is also in the offing, though I might wince away from it. How can it be otherwise, now that telepathy is worldwide? And so, in a wider sense than love for father and mother, or family, or one's neighbor, or even of one's spiritual principles, we are in a position right now, today, to align with God who is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. This is Luke 6 27-36 from the King James Version of the Bible. Bless them that curse you, and pray for them which despitefully use you. And unto him that smiteth thee on the one cheek offer also the other, and him that taketh away thy cloak forbid not to take thy coat also. Give to every man that asketh of thee and of him that taketh away thy goods ask them not again. And as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. For if ye love them which love you, what think have ye? For sinners also love those that love them. And if ye do good to them which do good to you, what think have ye? For sinners also do even the same. And if ye lend to them of whom ye hope to receive, what think have ye? For sinners also lend to sinners, to receive as much again. 
but love ye your enemies, and do good, and lend, hoping for nothing again, and your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest, for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Be ye therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. Like a father to his children, God is kind to all humans. If we want to get through the awakening in the most expedient manner, in the most comfortable fashion, here is the message, align with God. Be kind like Him. Be merciful like Him. Allow the most culpable of humans to make their own peace with God. The time is very short, and the very best arrangements have been made by God, with the help of all the angelic realm, to shepherd each and every one of us through this process. Let us stand aside and allow Christ do his work of judgment and of forgiveness on behalf of his Father, through the Holy Spirit. Christ, on the light and the darkness. I have spoken some about the clearing of the shadow of the personality from our astral bodies. Christ speaks to this as well, here is John 8 12 from the King James Version of the Bible. I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. If we take Christ's hand, and follow his precepts, we will make it through this difficult time of transition. There is a very great deal for each of us to look forward to, as all are eyes to Christ consciousness. In Love, Light and Joy Alice B. Claggett I Am of the Stars Written and published on April 29, 2016, revised on June 7, 2022.